The film ends abruptly. But no matter what the outcome of the encounter was, the brief shot of this priest with a half-dressed woman in his room is damaging enough to guarantee his future assistance in the surveillance of Velo's activities. Certainly in the near future, the Illuminati-controlled KGB agents will begin looking for ways to manipulate Velo himself. Once that is accomplished, they will be extremely close to the very heart of the Catholic religion, Pope Paul VI. But it appears that the Illuminati was not content with exerting only influence to control the Vatican. They sometimes resorted to murder. Since the founding of the Illuminati, a number of officials have died at the Vatican under highly suspicious circumstances, including three popes. In each case, the death of the official was timed so as to have a great political significance, the telltale mark of the secret brotherhood influencing world politics for their benefit. In 1939, Pope Pius XI was poised to release a statement condemning both the Nazis and the fascists, groups doing the kind of evil that the Illuminati would be behind. But before he could make the public statement, he suddenly died. A close assistant, Cardinal Ticheron, was heard to repeat again and again in French, They have assassinated him. They have assassinated him. His body was quickly embalmed making an autopsy and proof of cause of death impossible. In 1978, it seemed the secret brotherhood might again be using murder to manipulate the papacy. Paul VI suddenly died. Admittedly, he was frail, but the sudden worsening of his condition seemed all too convenient to many observers. However, this time, the Illuminati architects got a result they probably were not expecting. A pope who would be at odds with them. John Paul I. Almost immediately after he took office, the new Pope showed a great deal of independence. It seemed that John Paul had a special distaste for the corruption he had seen was rampant in the Vatican's finances. While he was the Cardinal of Venice, the Venetian Catholic Bank was sold in a secret deal to the Vatican Bank for a greatly undervalued amount. Profits reaped by a few were estimated at more than $70 million, but the losses to the Venetians were great. The clergy of Venice even lost their pension funds. Instrumental in the deal were bankers Roberto Calvi, his mentor, Sindona, and the director of the Vatican Bank, Bishop Marcinkus. After John Paul became Pope, these three were still in charge of investing much of the church's money. In his new position, the pontiff had the power to investigate them and publicly bring out the facts. Altogether, he was poised to uncover illegal dealings that involved almost a billion dollars. This would be a serious blow to the Illuminati, who were certainly behind the criminal financial dealings. The danger to the Pope became shockingly clear one day at a private meeting between John Paul and a Russian Orthodox Archbishop, Nikodim. As the meeting began, coffee was poured. Nikodim took the first sip, and almost immediately collapsed to the floor and died. His face was very contorted in a horrible and unnatural grimace, as if the death was very painful. The son Pope carefully put down his own cup before he sipped. Certainly it came to his mind that the coffee must have been laced with poison that was meant for him. The official doctor, however, quickly proclaimed that the Archbishop had died from what had become the standard cause for deaths at the Vatican, a massive coronary. All the facts surrounding the mysterious death of the Russian Archbishop Nikodim pointed toward an assassination attempt and a cover-up. The Russian's body was embalmed very quickly after his death, without a prior complete medical examination. 
After the embalming, it would be impossible to perform an accurate autopsy to determine the cause of death, particularly if it involved poison. Also, the coffee the Archbishop drank was never collected for analysis, and no forensic investigation was ever carried out. Although the proof was gone, to many it was clear that the Pope had narrowly escaped being murdered only ten days after he was elected. The experience proved so frightening that John Paul called a secret meeting with his top four cardinals to discuss the situation. The meeting took place on September 28, 1978. Only the four cardinals and the Pope were in the room. To this day, it is not known exactly what was said, but afterwards, the Pope was moved to take action. He ended the term of Cardinal Vilo as Secretary of State. This was the same Cardinal Vilo whose assistant had been blackmailed in the KGB films taken in 1972. Over the six years, this cardinal must have also been drawn into the Illuminati's web. Removing him meant that the Pope had uncovered at least part of the dark secret. But even John Paul could not avoid his fate at the hands of the Illuminati. That night, the pontiff retired earlier than usual and took with him detailed notes of the secret meeting to deliberate upon. At 5 a.m. the next morning, the Pope's closest attendant, Sister Vincenza, became concerned. His Holiness had never overslept before. She appeared inside his door. John Paul appeared to be sitting in bed with a light on as if he were reading. Various papers were around him. But to her horror, his face was frozen in the same agonized contortion she had seen on the face of the dead Russian Nikodim only days before. After only 33 days of Pope, John Paul was dead. After more than 200 years of protecting their secret ways, the Illuminati was very thorough at covering its tracks. Although the Pope had relieved him of his Secretary of State duties just hours before, Cardinal Vilo took charge. As a senior cardinal, he was now, in essence, a temporary Pope. He first locked himself in the papal bedroom and collected prescription medicines from the bed table and most of the papers in the room, including notes of the secret meeting. Also taken were the candies the pontiff often enjoyed while reading and even the Pope's reading glasses and slippers. All these items were never seen again. Next, Vilo sent Sister Vincenza away to a convent after forbidding her to tell anyone that she had found the pontiff dead and anything about what she saw. And then at 6.10 a.m. he ordered embalmers to be summoned. But the most shocking occurrence of all was that they arrived almost immediately. It was estimated that given the distance the embalmers had to travel, they must have been contacted at 4.45 a.m., 15 minutes before the time that the sister had discovered the Pope. At 7.30 a.m., a public announcement was issued. The cause of death was heart failure. Instead of Sister Vincentia, it was reported that the Pope's secretary, Monsignor Maggi, had found the body and the time of discovery was changed to 5.30. By the time of the announcement, the embalmers had already done their work, just as in the all too similar death of the Russian Archbishop only 23 days before. Any possibility of a 100% accurate autopsy was eliminated. If foul play was involved in the death of John Paul I, the chance to prove it was conclusively gone forever. Ten days after John Paul's funeral, Cardinal Vilo assembled the conclave to elect a successor. The official electing body includes 111 cardinals. Once sequestered in the Sistine Chapel, the Cardinals must invoke the power of the Holy Ghost to guide them to their decision. But in truth, the principal candidates for Pope are not determined behind the closed doors of the conclave. These decisions are made in the elegant restaurants of Rome, where the most powerful Cardinals meet for their 